Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So the audio was a bit scuffed, so I'm doing a voiceover over the entire thing for today's video. Um, but we are going to be working in this sketchbook for part of the session and then another sketchbook for the first half because I wanted to demo a certain product for you guys. So the lovely people at ArtX actually sent me the 72 colored colored pencils, which I believe is a new product for them. And I actually didn't know that they were making colored pencils, so that's very cool. So I wanted to talk about these a little bit and then we can go jump in to um, kind of like me using them in a time-lapse format. Plus I will talk about more about like application, my thoughts and feelings, and just like the general things about the pencils themselves. So on the back, um, it does say colored pencils. They are 3.8 millimeter soft cores. They are richly saturated pigments, wide range of colors, break resistant lead and easy to blend. So um, one thing right off the bat I noticed is that for the amount of pencils that you get and the price, I find that this is much more of an affordable set compared to some other ones that I've used in the past. Um, and from experience, the quality is a lot better than what I would consider student grade. I think it would hover between student and artist grade for colored pencils. And yeah, that's kind of just my opinion. I don't have a super large range. I've used like Crayola, I've used Laurentian, I've used Rosart, I've used Prismacolors, I've used Prismacolor Scholars, Premiers, um, as well as now these ones. So. The barrels themselves are round. I know some people might not like it because they roll around, but personally, I do like the round um, kind of like barrel, I guess, for the pencil. I have no idea what you would call it, but I do like it. It's just easier to hold. They do come pre-sharpened and they are set up in the stand within the box, which I really like that the box is the stand for the pencils. So it kind of has these little grooves inside these little foam portions and it's kind of set up um it's set up as like two different halves rather than um just one gigantic space for all your pencils so i noticed that after i've taken out quite a bit of pencils not all of them were like toppling over or anything they have enough grooves so that they can sit nicely but it's not like individual grooves where you have to like aim accurately for you to kind of place your pencil within like each individual slot um, so I'm showing you guys kind of the shape as well as just the overall look of the pencils. Like I said, they come pre-sharpened, round barrel. It has this really cute kind of star design with a barcode. It has the Art X um, logo as well as the name of the color of the pencil, which is really nice, as well as a code that is associated with the back of the box where you guys can see the color swatches. But I highly recommend that you swatch your own colors on a separate piece of paper if you're... Um, a little bit more, I guess, precise with your colors, I guess. I didn't swatch them this time. I think the barrels gave me enough indication. And if not, as soon as I picked up a pencil, you can usually tell the color by the lead itself. Some of the leads don't match 100% with their barrels, but I think if you look at the lead, you can get a good gist of what color you're choosing. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys like a little bit of a quick demo of what we're gonna be using today in terms of technique maybe um usually i don't press really hard when it comes to colored pencils anymore i usually did it when i was doing more realism stuff which we are going to tackle that as a challenge today but i'm not going to be pressing super duper hard for the most part so you guys can see how i build up layers but i wanted to show you guys what the full range of the pencil looks like so i usually do this with any kind of dry medium so i put as much pressure as i can and kind of gradually get lighter and lighter so i can see the full range and you can see that when i press super hard you can get some pretty flat areas and then when you go really light um, you kind of get this other kind of texture which might be beneficial for you so for in order to show you guys, I guess, the the blending, I wanted to do orange to yellow. So I noticed one thing is that me pressing hard into the other color, which in this case is yellow into orange, there was a little bit more kind of like a streakier texture where I didn't fill in the gaps because even though these are soft core, I don't think they're as waxy as maybe, let's say, Prismacolor, but I think it does a great job if you either layer up a lot of different layers or you're pressing hard enough um, into one color into the like to the other which i've shown you guys with the little i'll put an arrow to it but to the bottom left hand one and then i try to do the opposite for the bottom right hand 
um, where I'm trying to put the darker color into the lighter color and trying to see if I can get a more seamless blend. I find that using the lighter color into the darker color gives me a better result. I also wanted to try out using the white color pencils on a colored surface and these are just gouache um, swatches that I had laying around because I couldn't find any of my toned papers so I decided to do that and you can see the white does show up um, quite nicely. It's not the brightest white that I've seen but it definitely does show up quite well. So for the first session that we're going to do in terms of testing out the pencil crayons, I wanted to show you guys using the Strathmore I think this is just like recycled paper. So you can see Venti and then there's Masaki and Goro. So these were done with Prisma colors in the past, but I wanted to show you guys this, which is the Art X color pencils. So I drew a little thing of Wanu, kind of a small flower, a random nose, and just a stylized portrait of just something from my brain. So we can get a kind of like a different range and see how the textures work on this paper. I tried pressing really hard on this paper to get a blend and I found that it worked a lot better compared to the cardstock and when I was using it in my sketchbook later, you're gonna see that I feel like if you press harder on texture paper, you might get a better result. I don't know if it's because the paper is just much softer. Um, but yeah, that was just kind of my experience about using that on texture paper versus like kind of the cardstock texture. Now. I usually don't do realism on this channel. I've done realism in the past and a lot of the time in university I would actually work in more of a realistic style and I would paint and draw like that more than like I guess like anime or anything like more cartoony but I wanted to tackle this today because I wanted to show you guys a little bit of better application um, compared to the other doodles that I'll do it in my sketchbook. So. To show you a kind of like a better range and how you can kind of layer up your color pencils i thought maybe a realistic portrait might be a better choice so we can play around with color and just showing you guys how you can basically layer up in a very soft way use color pencils it's because i think there is a difference where some people press super hard and get that really hyper realistic look because everything looks like one uniform finish and then the other way, which is what I'm doing today, is that you're lightly layering everything up and you're not pressing super hard to get rid of the whites of the paper. So I'm kind of leaving and preserving the texture of the paper a lot more by doing this. So in terms of the person I'm drawing, I'm drawing 17's Wanu or Wanu. Um, yeah, I used to draw him a lot realistically. I'm not gonna put the images up if you're interested in what I used to do in the past, maybe during my uni days. You can scroll super far back in my Instagram, maybe to like 2017 to 2019, I think is when I did a lot more realism. Heck, even maybe 2016, but I kind of stopped doing realism because I found a lot of limitations in terms of relying too heavily on references and caring too much about accuracy where I needed a little bit more freedom after I graduated from uni. So I decided to delve into anime again. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, I laid down a very light kind of like yellowy beige color to help just establish where I wanted the lighting to be. I did have a reference up, but I am using the reference to help plan out value and shapes rather than for color accuracy. Because one thing I really like about using something like let's say watercolor or color pencils, is that as long as the value is mostly correct, you can kind of fudge around <laughs> with the the hues and the colors of those values because as long as the values is kind of correct it'll still read as whatever that they're supposed to read as so you'll see that i'm using a lot of purples and blues into his skin a little bit later i did become a little bit timid while working on this because his left side of his face is supposed to be significantly much more cooler and darker and i think i got the coolness down and i really wanted to emphasize it but i didn't i got scared to really build up the darkness of it so his face is gonna look quite weirdly flat and i believe i drew his nose a bit too thin so yeah and it doesn't help that my camera doesn't pick up the shadow of the bridge of his nose on the left i can see it well in person but now i'm just looking at the footage i don't think it gets that much darker so his face doesn't look as defined as it should be um, but in terms of using the pencils, I had a great time using them. I think that 
they work and perform very well and I kind of like them a little bit more than my Prismacolors and it might be because of the lead itself or like the core because I don't know if it's because it's just a little bit less like waxy and maybe not entirely as soft as Prismacolor but the lead doesn't break. I had no issues about the lead breaking, it was easy to sharpen. Um, and just the feel of the lead, I think, is very similar to Prismacolor, but for some reason, it doesn't have like that weird fragility -ness, like how fragile I feel like Prismacolor sometimes is. It feels almost in between. If you use Prismacolor Scholars and Prismacolor Premiers, I think this is like happy medium of both. So it kind of can hold its shape a little bit more, but it's still soft enough that you can get like... Um, kind of like that creamier texture if you pressed hard enough, but you can also layer up really well with the color And I think the color payoff is actually really nice. I don't think I did it justice in My sketchbook, which is why I really wanted to push um, a little bit of the colors here if I could Apparently my camera doesn't really want to pick up that much of the colors, So apologies if it still looks a little washed out. I promise you that the colors are actually very vibrant I think it shows up mostly in his eyes and his lips anyways, so yeah uh, for the most part, I kind of, I think you saw in the beginning that I kind of picked out a general like selection of colors. So I selected like yellows and beiges in the beginning and then I started to add reds and oranges. So how I think of it is usually I do skin tone first just because I wanted to establish where the light is. So I pick any lightest part of the skin tone and then gradually get it to be a lot warmer and a little bit more vibrant, which is usually me adding yellows, oh, not yellows reds and oranges and purples because I like adding warmth to the face but then when I'm working with shadows that's when I can pick out a little bit of more of the cooler purples duller purples and kind of like the blues and I've used a lot of like the turquoise color in his skin as well just to pull out kind of more of that contrast and I think it kind of works um, because his lip color that I chose is a little bit more orangey rather than pink um, yeah, also because this set does have 72 colors, I did find that I had no issues trying to select colors. There's a good range of yellows, a good range of oranges, there's plenty of greens, um, reds were nice. I think at some point you saw that I had like a piece of paper selected so that I could test out the reds because there's three leads that are not leads, three reds that look fairly similar but then when laid out you could see that one was more purple, one was more orange, one was more pink so I needed to find the correct ones to actually really push out his lips a little bit more. Um, in terms of doing the darker areas, I chose more of, like the ultramarine and kind of like a dark purpley blue. They kind of pushed that a little bit more. For the most part, it looks kind of like Wanu. There's a bit of skewing here that I can see, but I'm not too bummed about it. Like I said, I actually haven't done realism in a long time, it feels like. I think it might be over a year or two since I've even done something remotely realistic. Like I've done like a nose or like eyes here and there, but like more of a full face I haven't done in a long time. Oh, I'm showing you guys a close up of kind of the texture. So you can see the texture of the paper because I didn't really press as hard. The only places I pressed really hard was the eyes because I wanted that depth, the nostrils, and his lips. Everything else, and I guess that little side of the hair. So anywhere I want it to be a lot darker, I kind of mix the blue and a brown together to kind of get a more darker color. Uh, but yeah, I really like the softer application for this, so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me attempt some realism with these pencil crayons or colored pencils. That's another thing I should have stated at the beginning. I'm Canadian, so I like to say pencil crayons rather than colored pencils. So sorry if that confuses you. So for the later half of the video, which we are starting now, I wanted to do a little bit of doodling in my sketchbook. And I actually did these ones first before I did the portrait of Wanu. And the reason is that I thought I liked smoother paper for these colored pencils, but I think I actually really like the textured paper a little bit more. I was less conscious about making things look too even because the texture is more apparent. But on smoother paper, I think I was getting a little bit anal about keeping things like smooth looking, keeping things consistent. So I think I needed the texture paper to help combat that a little bit. So in terms of what I'm drawing today, I am drawing kind of like flowers or any kind of 
plant in Genshin. Um, I picked a few, sketched them out with the palette color Eno. The palette color Eno is also what I used for the Wanu portrait. I believe I have a picture of the sketch, but it was a very like poorly done picture, so apologies if you can't see the sketch too clearly. I did sketch it. I don't use the grid method, therefore there is a lot of skewing and stuff. I just kind of eyeball things and you know erase things as I go. Um, another thing is that I noticed the the blue colors. I kind of wish there was just a lighter brighter blue but i think that's not on their end i think it's just a hard pigment to even just get because i wasn't able to get that kind of more like electric blue i feel like which is similar to what the what plant is this called lamp grass i believe is more of a almost like yellowy green ish blue but it's like more vibrant if that makes sense it's like super bright but it didn't have we didn't have that color available i guess for the set which is totally fine i did manage with it and i kind of added yellow which i think actually makes it look like it's glowing a little bit more uh but yeah on the smoother paper it's quite nice still i think on the smoother paper maybe i would have preferred to press super hard to kind of fix up any of these but on the texture paper i like to layer up slowly and I know a lot of you guys enjoyed the texture paper a little bit more for color pencils because of that texture is a bit more apparent and it looks a little bit more, I don't know, in a sense, kind of painterly, if that makes sense, instead of like something that looks more like photorealistic if you were to press super hard and make sure things are blended and seamless. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun using these pencils in my sketchbook too. I do think it works well on smooth paper and on textured paper. I did have a bit of an issue when layering the color sometimes on this paper, but I I believe it's because it's the notebook paper because even using, I think, Prisma colors, I have the same issue. Um, in terms of wax blooming, I didn't really run into that issue. I believe on their website, if you want to check it in the description, it does say that you can layer up to like five different colors or something like that. I'm assuming if it's like, if you're pressing hard, um, you can still layer up to about five colors and they'll probably still show up very well But like I said it I think it's a good idea to have a variation of kind of Pressing really hard and kind of pressing lightly for your drawings unless you're really going for that Hyper realism or like that really blended look But for me this kind of like light method really works and I like to do the outlines with the color pencils too and just slowly build up the tone and the value so yeah the flowers that i chose i believe the other ones are like the jayun chilies i apologize if i butcher that you have the lamp grass you have the sea ganodermas we have naku weed i have the sakura blossoms and i think the last one is mint that i have um but yeah i had a lot of fun layering these I gotta play around just like putting different colors to see what works and what doesn't work but if you guys know what color the sea ganoderma is that's the color i'm talking about in terms of um the color i wish this set had but for the most part most color pencil sets that i've owned in the past or i've used never really had that blue so i'm pretty sure it's just because the lack of pigment um is probably not available or very hard to replicate so it's not a fault on them i do highly recommend these pencils if it's something you guys are looking for in terms of learning it as a medium or wanting it to use it maybe to embellish your paintings or your sketches or your drawings highly recommend using these because you have such a variety like a wide variety of colors but the price point i think is much more affordable like i said it kind of falls um in between for me at least like prismacolor scholars and prismacolor premier so it's definitely kind of in between the student and the professional artist um quality in my opinion so the last doodle that i decided that i would like to do is of venti obviously or i don't really remember what the name is it's not technically venti venti was like the inspiration for the character design um, it's basically the character that Albedo decides to paint for the first portrait in the Five Kasen story. So if you haven't played the event, hopefully I didn't spoil that for you. Um, I think it's been long enough, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, I really liked his outfit and I thought that we could play around with the greens. I did screw up his hair a bit, which is where I kind of realized that my sketchbook paper didn't really like the layering if you're pressing too much. I did think it did kind of limit the amount of colors that I could put in. And I think it's also because like I 
personally like using blues, browns, and kind of purples to build up the tone for the hair if their hair color is black rather than just using black because I find just using straight black can make things look a little bit too dull. Um, but then again, you could always layer like blues and purples with the black and you can really pull out that color. So, you know, it's kind of like choose what you kind of prefer. So the line work I decided to do with the ballpoint pen and I decided to color with the color pencils like this instead of the other way, just so that I can give you guys a little bit more of a variety. Cause I know a lot of people work like this too, where you kind of treat your drawing as how most people probably would do it. You sketch, then you do line art, then you color. So yeah, I kind of wanted to do that today. And I think it was kind of fun. It was nice to just have an area where you can kind of stick everything in rather than worrying about, oh, did I cover this line? Did I accidentally cover this area because it wasn't well defined? So for the most part, I like the drawings that I did with the colored pencils. They were fun to do. I got to play around with texture. I do want to see if I can do more realism in the future. Probably not for videos, just for my own benefit because I kind of do miss it from time to time, but I feel like it's too much pressure on me to do it for a video. And I think it's also difficult because when I do it traditionally, I like to prop my paper almost like parallel with me. So like, like 90 degrees <laughs> upwards so that um, things aren't as skewed. Um, yeah, but you can see how easily these things layer up with each other. I was able to layer a purple and an orange on top of the yellow to make it look a little bit more goldy-ish. And then for his hat, so this is what I'm talking about. I'm not sure how well you guys can see it. The paper makes the colored pencils look a little bit more streaky. You can see it in the hat a lot. So I laid down like a light green and then a darker green. Then I tried layering a blue and I think later on I'll try layering a purple onto his hat. And it kind of stopped allowing the color to be put down. And I'm pretty sure it's because my paper is this weird smooth texture that really doesn't want to pick it up. I think the more textured paper will definitely pick up those colors more nicely. Um, but yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're interested in checking out these color pencils, I'll have links in the description for you guys to check out. I do highly recommend at least checking them out if you're interested in purchasing or just taking a look at these color pencils. I'm probably just gonna leave the voice over here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me draw Wanu, a few plants from Genshin, as well as Venti from the recent event. And thank you very much to ArtX for sending me these color pencils for me to try out. I had a blast working with them and I actually really like the artwork I made today. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!